Here we go. What is up, everybody? How are you? I'm Pete Mundo. HeartlandCollegeSports.com is, of course, how you find us covering the Big 12 Conference each and every day. Your independent Big 12 digital media outlet. It is championship week. You've got TCU. You've got Kansas State. And as of tonight, Tuesday, you've got the college football playoff rankings coming out. And it is looking great for the TCU Horn Frogs. In fact, I believe as of right now, unless TCU gets absolutely blown out on Saturday by Kansas State, I think the Horn Frogs are making the college football playoff even with a loss. And I have been complaining about this, pointing out the absurdity of TCU being treated by, like a group of 5 school, but it finally feels like to me this program and the season that TCU is having is getting the respect that it deserves. You know, it's amazing how it feels like ESPN flipped on a dime here. I don't know if you noticed if you watched the college football playoff ranking shows uh, the last few weeks. And TCU came in at number three this week behind Georgia and Michigan. Uh, USC is four. Ohio State's five. And then six is Alabama. Seven's Tennessee. Eight's Penn State. Nine's Clemson. K-State cracks the top 10, and then Texas at number 20. So I've been watching these each and every week because that's what we do here. That's what I have to do here. And then we come and talk to you about it. And between dopes like Paul Feinbaum and some of the other talking heads on ESPN, the disrespect towards TCU and the Big 12 has been absurd. Despite all the ESPN advanced analytics showing the Big 12 is having one of the best seasons of any conference in America because of its depth and quality. It doesn't matter to these guys. They don't care. They don't want to look at the facts. They don't want to watch the games. They don't want to look at the data. They just want to be like, well, TCU is not a blue blood, and we don't like TCU, and we don't like the Big 12. And I've been crowing about this for a, a month now since this whole thing started. It was amazing how the tone shifted on Tuesday night this week. I don't know if you noticed that, but suddenly the tone shifted and there became this immense amount of respect for TCU, an immense amount of respect for the resume. And you actually had, I don't know if it was Reese Davis, Kirk Herbstreet, maybe it was Des Howard. I don't know which one of the guys it was, but they all more or less agreed that TCU is in with a loss this weekend. TCU is in with a loss to Kansas State unless it's like 42-7. to Unless they get completely boat raced out of the building, TCU is in the college football playoff. Now, frankly, I've been making that case for two weeks. I think TCU's resume is worthy of being in the college football playoff. And all the data would suggest that. First off, you know, TCU has a better strength of schedule than Michigan and Georgia and is only one behind Ohio State. The strength of schedule, if you look at it right now, TCU's is 35, Michigan is 39, Georgia's 47, and Ohio State is 34. So TCU has a better strength of schedule. Let me repeat that. A better strength of schedule than Michigan, Georgia, and they're ahead of USC. USC is 57th. The strength of record, TCU is number one in the country. Michigan is number two in the country, Georgia's three in the country, Ohio State four, Alabama five, USC is six. So they've got the number one strength of record in the country. They've got a better strength of schedule than the two teams, the only two teams ahead of them in the nation. I, TC, and they're, by the way, the only top 10 matchup of any championship game this weekend is in the Big 12. And for whatever reason, I don't know if these guys finally started paying attention. I don't know if they got their heads out of their you-know-wheres. I don't know. But it was like all of a sudden, on Tuesday as I'm watching these rankings, they woke up to what the Big 12 Conference is and what those of us who follow college football and the Big 12, obviously, what we know it has been for a very long time now. I'm like... Thank you, guys. Welcome to the party. It's great to have you on board. That's what I've been saying. And I'm finally getting them to turn the corner with me on this. Finally, we're getting you on board there, guys. 
So with TCU coming in at three, I've got no problem with that. You know, Georgia, Michigan at one, two is fine. And I, I think a big reason you can make a case for Michigan at one. I think a big reason for Michigan at two is you don't want a rematch because if USC loses to Utah, it's likely Ohio State's the number four team in the country. If that happens and Michigan is one, you've got to rematch Michigan, Ohio State in the semifinal. And we all just saw that game last weekend. So who wants that? I, I don't want to be a conspiracy theorist on that, but I listen, they're human beings. Let's be honest. They understand this is a made for TV product. They're not dumb. I think that's absolutely part of the conversation. When you look at the league and the, the sport itself and where it's going, there's no doubt in my mind about that, that that may play some kind of a role in terms of how they decide one and two. Now you look at Kansas State and the Big 12, and the committee has been showing you for weeks now that it respects the Big 12 because K-State continues to be the highest-ranked three-loss team in America. They are again this week at number 10 at 9-3. and three. They're one spot ahead of Utah, who is also 9-3. and three. Of course, Utah is playing USC this weekend for the Pac-12 title. So K-State cracks the top 10, and then uh, you've got Texas inside the top 20, at number 20, at 8-4, and four, they move up three spots after beating Baylor uh, this past week. So all in all, the Big 12 teams are exactly where I expected them to be and where I anticipated uh, them to be. So that's a good thing. TCU is where it deserves to be. I mean, I would make a case for two, but either way, they are where they should be. They're in the top three. And I never thought I would say this, but it tells you what the analytics show, and it tells you what kind of season the Big 12 is having when suddenly TCU, yes, is potentially able to lose a game as a non-blue blood in a conference championship, and look at what you got. Still a team that could be in the college football playoff. And you know what else I heard? I don't know if you noticed this as well as I was watching the – the rankings on Tuesday night, I noticed a bunch of guys who like really don't care about conference championship games as if like, yeah, these games are played, but you know, Georgia is a 17 point favorite over LSU. Michigan's a 17 point favorite over Purdue. What a disaster that game is going to be. TCU uh, is actually a two point favorite over K state. That's one of the smaller spreads. A USC is a, I think one or two point favorite over Utah. So those two games are good. Outside of that, there's just not much juice. Clemson's a pretty heavy favorite over UNC. I want to say eight or nine points. There's just not much juice. And you do wonder, uh, when college football playoff expansion comes, does the conference championship game essentially go by the wayside? I wouldn't be shocked one bit if it did, if that's a conversation that ends up happening. I'd be okay with it because you can't have these guys playing 17 game seasons like this is the NFL or something like that. I mean, they'll do whatever they want to do, but I mean, you're going to have guys playing 16, 17, 18 games. That's too much. So if something's got to go, I don't want to get rid of games in, uh, I don't want to get rid of games in uh, September. I don't want to lose non-conference games. I think that's good for everybody, but the conference championship game is probably the one that goes. Uh, We're on Facebook Live, by the way. We're on YouTube. I hope that you'll subscribe to the YouTube page if you haven't yet. Um, As we go on Facebook Live, Jim asks, Pete, can you get a case? Can K-State get a little bigger sign on your wall? Uh, Yeah, I admit. Yeah, listen, this is like putting together a puzzle back here if you're watching on YouTube or Facebook Live. I got to piece the puzzle together, but I'll tell you what. uh, I I can work on that in the offseason. I'll give you that, Jim. I'll work on a bigger K-State sign for you in the offseason, pal. Does that sound good? All right? I I'll, I'll, I will. I'll genuinely work on that. I, but, I'll, you know, I'm trying to piece everything together here. It's not easy. Definitely, if you win the Big 12 title on Saturday, I'll get a big old, uh, big old sign for you. I'll put it right above my head. How's that sound? Hey, speaking of uh, the game this weekend, before we get to some of your comments on Facebook Live, um, we are giving away a pair of championship game tickets to a TCU fan and a K-State fan this weekend for the game. Uh, We are doing that at heartlandcollegesports.com. We wrote about it on the website. It's all over our social media channels as well. But what you have to do, I'll start off if you're a K-State fan. If you are a K-State fan, what we ask you to do 
to win, to be entered to win tickets to the game this weekend, the Big 12 championship game this weekend. Follow us on Twitter, Instagram, and Facebook, two of those three. Subscribe to our YouTube page, where many of you are watching right now. And then subscribe to our Everything Emaw podcast. That is our K-State-specific podcast on iTunes or Spotify. And email me a, a, a screenshot of your subscription to Pete Mundo, or it's pmundo824 at gmail.com. pmundo824 at gmail.com. So you got to subscribe to our YouTube page, follow us on Twitter, Instagram, and Facebook. And then our K-State podcast is the Everything Emaw podcast on iTunes or Spotify, and then email me a screenshot of your subscription to pmundo, that's my name, pmundo824 at gmail.com. And then, of course, if you're a TCU fan, same deal. Follow us on Twitter, Instagram, Facebook, subscribe on YouTube, and then we have a TCU-focused podcast, the Hypnotoad podcast. It covers TCU exclusively. And uh, same thing, iTunes or Spotify for that. And then send me a screenshot of your subscription to pmundo824 at gmail.com. So there you go. That is um, how you get free. You get entered to win free tickets to the Big 12 championship game this weekend. We're giving away one pair to K-State fans, and we're giving away one pair to TCU fans for the game. You'll be there at Jerry World on Saturday morning, 11 a.m. kickoff. College game day is going to be there. So we're fired up for that. We're excited to give those tickets away. And uh, you can also read about that on the website at heartlandcollegesports.com. Just go to the homepage, and you'll see it there. So a uh, great way to get involved. And we, wanna, we want you to win those tickets. We want to give them to you. And that's how you end up winning them. All right. Uh, Matthew writes, if TCU loses, should they be in the playoff? Uh, yes, that's how I started off the show. I think TCU is in unless they get blown out. They lose on a field goal, you know, as time expires, TCU deserves to be in the uh, college football playoff, no doubt in my mind. Elijah says, Pete, I think the only way TCU would get in if they lost this weekend is if USC also loses because Ohio State will get in, and what are you going to do? Give the fourth spot to Alabama? No, 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 no. Here's how this works, Elijah. If TCU loses... If TCU loses and USC wins, it will be Georgia, Michigan, USC, TCU. That's what I think it would be. Ohio State, Ohio State didn't win its division. Ohio, no. No, no, no. Ohio State's not getting in. No way. The strength of schedule is still going to be better at that point, I think, for TCU than it will be for Ohio State. I don't think the committee is really looking at these conference championship games unless you get embarrassed. So let's look at that the other way as well. If TCU loses, and let's say if TCU loses and USC loses, TCU is definitely in, and then it's probably Georgia, Michigan, Ohio State, TCU, or TCU, Ohio State in some order. If USC wins and TCU loses, I think it's Georgia, Michigan, USC, TCU. That's how I see that playing out. Ohio State had a chance. And here's the problem for Ohio State. They didn't lose by a field goal on the road at Michigan. They got blown out of their own building by Michigan. They got taken to the woodshed in the horseshoe by Michigan. Elijah says, I, I keep getting flashbacks of 2014. I get it. I rem- uh, we started this show in 2014. This this show and the website started in 2014. I was going ballistic when TCU beat Iowa State 55 to three and got dropped from three to six. I remember it well, like it was yesterday. It was the most egregious thing in the biggest joke of a decision by this committee that's ever been made. Because they cared about the 13th data point. The 13th data point matters. And the Big 12's like, we play a round robin. We don't need a 13th data point. Now, the Big 12 made mistakes, don't get me wrong. The whole, like, co-champion thing was stupid. I get it. I understand that. The Big 12 wasn't innocent in that whole deal. But the committee showed what a sham that it was out of the gates in 2014 with their decision-making around that whole thing. You win 55-3, to you fall three spots. 
I, it was absolutely bonkers. So I understand kind of having that concern, but I, this year just feels different to me. I think there's a big drop-off, obviously, after that. Tennessee's got two losses. Alabama's got two losses. And then, of course, there's the Ohio State conundrum, but the way they lost matters. And that's what I'm saying. The way TCU would potentially lose matters. If K-State blows them out of the building, then yes, that's a big problem. Ohio State probably gets in. If they lose a close game in the only top 10 matchup in the, in the championship games this weekend of the Power Five, then I, 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 don't see, I don't see that happening. I don't. I might eat my words. I might look like a fool come Sunday when the playoff rankings come out, but I don't see that being a problem right now. That's just that's where my head is at, and that's what I think we're looking at here as we uh, get set for this weekend and we get set for what's going to be a great environment. All purple at Jerry World. All purple at Jerry World uh, this weekend. So how about that? Uh, <laughs> elsewhere. Um, around the Big 12, uh, you know, this was a, a big loss, a big loss with Luke Fickle leaving Cincinnati for uh, Wisconsin. But it's interesting. You see some of these names that are popping up for the Cincinnati job. Tom Herman in the mix, according to a couple of reports. Uh, Matt Campbell's name came up. I know Matt Campbell's an Ohio guy through and through. And I know that Cincinnati's about to join the Big 12, so if you're Matt Campbell, you may say, I'm in my home state. Uh, it's the state I know best. And I- I'm on, you know, running a group of five pro or a power five program. I- y- you might be able to talk somebody into that, but not Matt Campbell. I mean, this guy, this guy has turned down a lot of jobs. This guy has turned down a lot of interviews. And now he's going to go, I get it, going back to your home state potentially, but you got to then rebuild Cincinnati, not rebuild them, but take them from being a group of five to a power five program. I, that, that's not easy. That is not easy at all. I don't see that. Clay Helton in the mix as well. I mean, that's crazy. That is not Clay Helton. Clay Helton should be coaching Pee Wee football. I, there, there's no way you get Clay Helton in the mix. I mean, look at Clay Helton. Look at Clay Helton's resume at USC. I look at his resume and then compare it to what Lincoln Riley's done in one year. I mean, you take out that 2017 season when they went 11 and three and lost the cotton bowl. When you take out that season, five and two, seven and two, four and five, seven and two, five. And I mean, it's just like, dude, you got that kind of talent and you come up that short. I, I there, I don't see that happening. I just don't. I, I be I know I know you know uh, the big Georgia Southern win this year was what beating Nebraska Nebraska stinks Nebraska no way no way no way no way I, I don't see it but it's just I always love seeing these names kind of pop up uh, Matt Campbell I mean I'm telling you you're gonna have here in Kansas Olathe North High School is gonna come up with an opening for head coach and Matt Campbell's name is gonna be linked to it it's amazing. I mean, the guy gets linked to every job in America. It's just absolutely stunning. And it seems like it never ends. (laughs) Uh, Deion Sanders asked Donald. It sounds like Deion's got an offer for that Colorado job, last I checked. I I wouldn't hire Deion Sanders. I don't don't buy the whole Deion Sanders thing. Uh, No, I don't. I wouldn't go there. That's just me if I'm running a team. Maybe he's a brilliant X's and O's guy. Maybe he's really just a great marketer who's got good X's and O's guys below him. I don't know. All I know is uh, there's a lot with Dion that I, I'm not really looking to deal with. I'll just put it that way. I want no part of Dion Sanders, one of my program. I don't. <laughs> oh, man, it's going to be a great week. We are going to be cranking out so much content at heartlandcollegesports.com. I hope you'll be checking it out. We're going to announce our all Big 12 team on Wednesday. Uh, no Urban Myers. Urban's not happening, baby. Although, did you see Ohio State fans were so ticked off after the loss to Michigan? They were chanting for Urban as he was analyzing the game after the fact on the uh, uh, the Fox TV set, the big noon countdown, the big noon kickoff set. Oh, gosh. 
Urban, Urban, I don't know. Someone asked, someone tell me, how are the girls to grind up on in the Cincinnati bars? That's what I want to know. Can anyone answer that for me when it comes to Urban Meyer? Because that may change the game on Urban Meyer to Cincinnati. But uh, I have never spent a minute in Cincinnati, so I cannot answer that one for you. And even if I could, uh, you know, grinding on college girls and bars is 15 years of my past at this point. So, yeah. All right. Hey, before I get myself in any more trouble, have a great night. Thanks for being here. Subscribe on YouTube. Subscribe to the podcast. Leave a five-star rating and review if you have 30 seconds. Please do that. We'll send you a free Heartland College Sports koozie in the mail when you leave that rating and review and send me a screenshot to Pete Mundo at heartlandcollegesports.com. And don't forget, we're giving away a pair of tickets to the Big 12 Championship game, a pair to a TCU fan, a pair to a K-State fan, Instructions on how to win are on the website at heartlandcollegesports.com. You guys have a great day, great night. We'll talk to you soon. I'm Pete Mundo. Subscribe. Take care.